Hello and welcome to this aerial flow intended to bring relief to your tight hips. So you are going to need two yoga blocks today for this practice. If you do not have yoga blocks, you might be able to get away with something like some large books. Um, but for the most part, the blocks are going to be the easiest thing for you. So hopefully you have some close by. All right, we are actually going to get started on the floor. And for this entire practice, we are going to be pretty low to the floor the whole time because I want you to really deepen into gravity with some of these poses and stretches today so that those tight hips can just find some space being close to the stability of the earth. So let's get going. Make your way down onto the floor. Make sure you have those blocks. And even if you are super flexible, you do yoga all the time and you feel like you don't need blocks, I myself am flexible, I'm hypermobile even, and I am finding that sometimes when I play around with different props, they're not um, necessarily making it easier, it's just making it customizable in a different way. So I'm able to find little nooks and crannies that I don't normally find without them. So it's just a way of changing the geography a little bit in the body and having a little more well-rounded practice in some ways. So I encourage you to use the blocks even if normally you don't <clears throat> because we're going to play around with how they actually help us find some deeper nourishing edges for our hips today. So let's get going. This first one is going to be exactly that. We're going to go into cat-cow, but not in a traditional standpoint. We're going to bring those hands to uh, the blocks on a high position. And I want you to have your hands, instead of directly under you, actually slightly in front of you. So instead of right under the shoulder, you see there that, that there's an angle. And they are shoulder width apart. My toes are going to be tucked under for this. And as you inhale, I want you to not necessarily bring your heart forward, but stay kind of where you are and just think, pull the blocks like down and back. And notice how not only does it help open up the chest, but maybe you get a little extra stretch in the abdomen that's not usually accessible when you are in regular cat-cow. So there's an inhale. Now the exhale, tuck the tail under first. Notice the flexion of the spine and even feel the abs kind of pull you back as if your hips were coming closer to your heels. Big cat stretch, big spine stretch, and a little bit of a foot stretch. So usually with my cat cow, I tend to flip the feet under with the breath. So arches are open, arches are closed. But for this one, I want to kind of juice those feet because sometimes those tight hips and those tight feet are definitely having a conversation. I like to say that the feet talk to the seat. So this is the pull back. Now, inhale here again, I'm not pulling my chest so far forward, but I'm more thinking of unraveling the tailbone. Inhale, lift the heart, press down through the blocks, almost like I'm trying to pull them under me as if I were shortening the mat. And feel how the upper body can lift. It's not as much strain on the neck. It's really about that space under the sternum that diaphragm gets to open. Exhale, tuck the tail under. Send those hips back just a smidgen. Feel that big spine stretch, tuck the head under. Inhale, send the tailbone up. Feel the whole spine start to lengthen. Now here again, don't pull forward. Just think, you must pull down and lift. Exhale to tuck. All right, now that you got the gist of it, I want you to take five more rounds of breath with it. So breathing in, breathing out. Find the edge. Find that space that doesn't normally get the juice. doing great. And bring it back into that 
cat stretch, hips are low. Now give yourself just a gentle sway side to side. If you are old enough to remember what a typewriter is, it should almost feel like you are that typewriter uh, going back and forth side to side. So it's not necessarily a drop, but a glide. Breathing in and breathing out. Now don't worry, we're about to come off the knees if you need to come off the knees, but we are gonna be staying on one knee. So if you'd like to roll up your mat or something or put a blanket down for your knees, please do so because we are gonna go into single leg unilateral work here. So take the blocks, widen them on the mat. Good. Let's start with the left foot. Left foot is forward, right knee. I'm gonna shift it back just a smidgen more. So I get a nice big stretch here through the front body. Now here again, feel that sensation of lifting through the heart, pressing down through those blocks like it's the easy button, right? Press down and pull. Now think that long right hip, pull it gently forward, breathing in and out here. See if you can invite space into that hip and abdomen on the right side, stretching that psoas. Next, we'll invite dynamic movement into this. Notice my back toes are still tucked under. That is on purpose. You're going to inhale here on the exhale. Same sensation as the cat-cow. We're gonna send the hips back, kind of finding this half hadamanasana. Now those front toes can roll up or they can stay reaching down. In fact, I'd invite you to play with both. You're going to inhale, come back through towards the front. Exhale, scoop the abdominals up away from the thigh to send the hips back, stretch that spine. Maybe you stretch that foot, give it a little pump up and down while you're back there, and then inhale, come forward. Send that heart forward, shoulders back, hugging the spine. Now exhale, abdominals hug the spine to round over. You'll notice also that gentle foot stretch in the back foot. Inhale, spine squeezed by the shoulders gently. Exhale, abs hug the spine. Pump that foot back there, meaning while your hips are back, maybe that front foot reaches and lifts those toes and then come forward one more time. And exhale, scoop on back. Find the pullback. And now inhale, coming up one more time. Now this time, we're gonna stay in this nice low crescent shape here with that lower body, right? Press the hips forward. Right hand's gonna stay on the block. Now, again, you might be able to get your hand to the floor for this twist, and maybe you normally do, I certainly do, but notice if you keep your hand on the block and you reach the left hand up, how you can press into the right block, and now the emphasis is not just sinking into the hip, but feeling the open expansion of the chest. The more we can get that right rib to lift gently away from the right hip, we get that so as to open more. Now you can take the left hand, reach it back behind you. Maybe you glance behind that shoulder. Maybe you take the bind. But just notice how lifting the floor lifts the heart and can create more space for the so as. Breathe in here. Squeezing through the inner thighs, keep pulling energy into the midline. On your next breath, come back up and around. Now we're gonna deepen this a little bit more. One of my client's favorites is this next one. We do it in multiple ways, standing here. Um, so I'm gonna teach you the low version of this, low to the floor. So hips are still squared up. That right hip's gently pulling forward. Left hip is gently pulling back, scissoring inner thigh energy towards the pubic bone. Take the left hand, reach it up, straight by that ear almost. It doesn't have to be super high. It can just be reaching out as if you're reaching for something beyond the edge of your mat. Now very gently start to bring that body around. So left hand's gonna get heavy. Bring that, I'm sorry, right hand heavy. Right shoulder pulls back towards the spine to bring that left hand around in this arc. 
So now I've created almost this letter J from my back heel up my spine and around my left arm, I look like the letter J. And just breathe. If your hand floating out there in space feels crunchy on your shoulder, you can bring your hand behind your head and just focus on that space through the elbow. Doing awesome. And now bring it back around to center. Now, next thing to open up this hip even more, maybe you bring this foot a little bit back so it doesn't feel so far out in front of you. Here again, I invite you to keep your right hand connected. Flatten out your left block so that it's down on its side and it's kind of over here beside where your right, your left knee would be. Sorry, I'm just getting my lefts and rights all Twitter paid it today. Now roll into the pinky edge of the foot and see if you can set that knee onto that block. If you can't, you can always lift it up onto the mid height so it's not as low. So it would look more like this mid height and set it down and breathe here. Now here again, shoulders stay out of the ears, heart presents forward, hips are squared up to the mat and we breathe. It's just a different angle of like a lizard, which feels quite lovely. And the blocks provide a stability. Body, the body always wants stability first. So the blocks help provide the stability so that even those of us who tend to be more mobile can find an extra smidgen that we didn't find before. And then you're gonna bring that up. Knee back under your chest, block back to its height take them wide onto the mat, and then you're going to bring that back leg up. So now you're in a low lunge. Now here I want you to pump that back foot. So this is almost like a hiker's yoga, right? So can we get, or runner's yoga, if we're using our legs a lot, can we get that ankle and foot pliability? So just give yourself some pumps here. And then I'm gonna ask you to hold steady find where it feels comfortable. So maybe that's a little half high toe. And now here again, right hand stays down, left hand lifts up, find the twist, square up the hips, pull the right hip slightly forward, left hip gently back. Breathing in and out. We're gonna float that left hand down. We're gonna try that J curve here on this higher level. So keep those inner thighs scissoring towards the pubic bone, pelvic floor lifts, lower abdominals are engaged. Reach the left hand up and then sweep it over. Create that J curve, breathe. Right shoulder stays plugged into its pocket. Love your breath. Gratitude to the body. One more here. And then bring it back around. Hand connects to the block. Take the back foot, place it in slightly closer and look down at your feet. Notice how you're standing on two rails. Okay, so not a balance beam, but like a narrow railroad track. Feel the big toe base, little toe base and center heel pad of each foot. And maybe even lift the toes, place them back down, spread them out. Great. Now blocks are under you and you're going to send the hips square. So think of shortening the mat under your left heel, like you're trying to pull your mat under you, but the right hip is gently pressing forward. And now let the head dive down. Hello, high hamstring, breathe. Now for this one, if it is in your practice to bring your hands up overhead, by all means, you can do that. So if you wanna go into that, I would say come up halfway rise, clasp the hands behind the back, and then send the hands up the heart down if that's in your practice, okay? But if you're wanting to focus all of your energy just into the hips and that hamstring, then just bring your hands down and use those blocks to really open up the hip. 
Two more deep breaths here. Now halfway rise, bring the right foot up behind its block, bring the left foot behind its block. Now think of lifting a little taller through that spine, find that relief there for a moment. And now I want you to forward fold. It's not quite a super wide one, but it's also not a normal one. It's a somewhere in between. We're changing the body's geography a little bit today. We're throwing it some unexpected surprises. Let that head hang heavy. And then I invite you to glide your hips side to side. See if you can relieve some pressure in the pelvis. Think of that typewriter again, just glide side to side. I give my clients this exercise often for pelvic floor pressure relief. Take your time with it. All right, settle into center. Take a deep breath in and exhale. On your next inhale, halfway rise. This time you're gonna bring that right foot in slightly center, left foot goes back, and I'm gonna let you come all the way down onto that knee. Take a nice deep sigh of relief there. Coming off those legs for a moment, we're gonna come back into that big stretch forward. The left toes are tucked under on purpose, right hip is gently pulling back, left hip is presenting forward lift through the heart, shrug the shoulders gently down. Maybe you even lift through the neck a little bit too if that feels good, but don't feel you have to do that, especially since your arms are actively pressing down. And breathe. Feels so good. Now notice here too, like my front knee is going over my ankle a little bit. That is okay to do so. It's good ankle mobility. So it doesn't have to be back here. It can go forward. Especially since we're not loading it with like a 300 pound barbell or something. It's, it's okay to move it in that way. Now, moving into our half Hanumanasana flow. So stretching long now through the right leg, we sink back. Now remember, drawing up through the abdominals, stretch the spine, think of that cat arch, and then inhale, pulling forward. Exhale, pulling back. Inhale, pulling forward. And exhale, pulling back. And when you pull forward, really send those shoulders down and back. Present that heart forward and exhale. Feel that gentle foot stretch, perhaps. Working on the pliability of the foot. As you come forward this time, hang tight there in just that midway point so don't overextend forward. Come into this place where you can scissor both inner thighs towards the pubic bone but still feel a stretch in that left hip. From here, we're gonna add the twist. So left hand stays on the block, right hand twist up and around. Here again, you're actively pressing into the block, bring the shoulder out of the ear. Perhaps you send the right hand back, looking over the shoulder. Perhaps you come into the bind. Wherever you settle, lift the heart, plug the shoulders gently. No need to overforce them. Pull up that energy through the pelvic floor and core. Breathe into the back. See if you can create space between the left hip and the left ribs. Mm 
We're going to sit and simmer with this for one more breath. On your next breath, bring this up and around. Settle the right chest, like the right side of the chest forward. Reach the right arm up. Now remember, left shoulder down into its pocket. Right shoulder, right arm reaches around, creating that letter J. Breathing here. A reminder that if the hand reaching out doesn't feel good, bring the hand behind the nape of the neck and just focus on that elbow reaching up and away. Now, if you notice there's a pinch in the front hip, you might have shifted a little bit. So think right heel is pulling the mat short. The left hip is stretching forward. Two more deep breaths here. And relax. Good. Now from here, we're gonna bring that back leg into a straight position, bringing us into the low lunge. Oops, sorry, actually go back down there for a hot second. We almost forgot lizard and that would be a travesty. So set that block on either the medium or the low right out there to the side. And now you're going to settle the hip down. Keep lifting up through that block. Nice and steady with the breath. Shoulders are relaxed. Bring it back up. All right, so now we can bring that back leg up into that position. We're gonna pump that ankle, stretch and reach. Good. Now moving into the twist, bringing that arm up, sinking those hips down, scissoring in through those inner thighs, breathing nice and steady here. And then bringing that arm forward, sweeping around, finding that length. Letter J, just breathe. Come back around. We're gonna bring that back foot in just a little bit. Find those rails, that gentle railroad track, narrow railroad track. And then inhale, halfway rise. Take the pressure off those wrists for a moment. And then exhale, bending into the arms, sinking over that front leg. If it's in your practice to do the arm bind, Halfway rise, clasp the hands behind your back, and then exhale, fold. Breathe in nice and deep. I like to imagine that my right heel is pulling back, left toes are pulling forward as if I were shortening the mat under me. Abdominals draw up and away from the thigh. Head gets heavy. Quads are lifted, kneecaps lifted. All that love to the hamstring. Inhale, halfway rise. And now bring the left foot in behind the block, right foot behind its block. Give yourself one more big forward fold here. So inhale, halfway rise, exhale, fold over. We're gonna, instead of doing the sway this time, I'm gonna add a little hamstring flossing. So I want you to bend the knees just enough that you feel like you can send your sits bones a little higher. Keep the sits bones high and then straighten the knees ever so gently. 
Keep the sits bones high, bend the knees. Maybe you can get them a little higher and then press the legs straight. Now, again, you don't have to overdo this. So if you need to come up from this a little bit, you may. You can put your hands on the shins. You can put your hands on your quads, your thighs, above the knees and floss there. So it takes you out of some of that forward fold. You're not as low in the head and heart. But you can still get that hamstring love. That's the main thing. Really let that head hang as much as possible. Even if you're a pie, just let the head be heavy. All right, so next up, I want you to take one block. You're gonna place it back behind you. Now, if your hips are pretty dang tight, you're gonna put that block up on high. And the other one in front of it, high. You're gonna turn your toes out. Heels are gonna be on the edges of the mat. And then you're gonna sit your tush down onto the block. So this is option one. Option two, if you can get a little bit lower in this, is to move the block onto the mid height, like so. And then option three, is to go even lower and down. Block can be anywhere, but I do want you to, instead of being here and hunched over, I want you to use the block as a reminder to press down to lift the heart up. And now see if you can sit into this. Now, truth be told, I can get super low, but I actually can feel a bigger hip release if I bring it up on the middle. So just notice where you can kind of settle into your bones a little bit. You might find that another level feels better. And now breathe. See if you can keep all of the toes connected to the floor and lift the arches of the feet, roll more into the pinky rails, if you find that your feet are collapsing in, roll into the outside edges here. Lift through the heart. Stay steady with the breath. And notice if you can get some movement into the pelvic floor. So like I'm gonna make some adjustments even where I can feel the pelvic floor, like my hips can feel like they can move a little bit better. So another way that you can try this, especially if you hold tension in your pelvic floor, is to turn the block so that it's more vertical. And then you are going to be sitting right into some sensitive tissue, perhaps. But see if you can be there and use this block in front of you to kind of like push up, lift and breathe into that soft tissue. Now, ideally with the way that the body works with these domes that lift and lower with your breath, as you inhale and your rib cage expand into your back, you should be able to breathe into the back of your waist and even feel the tension on the pelvic floor like soften into the block. As you exhale and that transverse abdominus starts to hug the waist, you're gonna feel the lift of the pelvic floor, the lifting of the waist, and the closing of the ribs. Inhale, open the ribs, expand the waist, especially in the back, expand the pelvic floor, exhale, lift. Aren't these peachy? Inhale, and exhale. Try not to round forward. You wanna think tall, not caveman. Breathing in and out. You're doing awesome. Three more breaths, I promise. All right, it's time to come off of that. So take your block. I like to put one off to the side just to kind of like 
help prop me up to lift the block out, you'll make your way gently on to the floor. Now we're going to do some seated work next. Keep the blocks handy. So I'm going to put my left leg out in front of me, right leg comes inside here, so right arch to the left thigh, and I'm going to spiral those thighs in like so. Okay. Now, even though you could maybe bend all the way over, I'd like you to, instead of stressing out the top of the hamstring today, um, because that might be the usual mode, is instead, let's see if we can start to play around with the way our lower back and our hamstring share space around our pelvis. So keep the blocks handy, maybe even keep them close to you, or you can even use them in any way. But the goal is to almost feel like, instead of just dropping in, is to press into the block and pull the heart forward, okay? And then round from there. Maybe you can take those blocks out longer. But the whole time I'm feeling like I'm lifting my abdominals away from my inner thighs. And feel that stretch more through the spine. I want you to breathe in here. Just keep breathing. How many of you heard Dory right there? Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Now we're going to actively stretch the hamstrings next with this. So blocks are going to stay out there. Or you might find that a block between your hands is helpful for this next part. Because you're going to inhale, rise up. Then on the exhale, you're going to pull the body long over that leg and then reach the arms over head and stay here for five deep breaths. Those front toes are flexed back, quads are tight, lift those kneecaps and hold. Now inhale, rise up, bring the block to the chest. Exhale, side away. Did it, great job. Now, before we move to the other side, set that block down for a moment. Uh, you can bring the other one with you. I want you to bend your right knee up. So the knee that was just out, bring it in. You're going to hook left elbow around that knee for a moment, just so you can grab the block with your right hand, set it back here. And then I want you to lift. Now here again, we do this, we tent the fingers, my hands can get down there just fine, maybe yours can as well. But I want you to focus instead on the lift and twist. Look back over that right shoulder. See if you can stay heavy on both gluteals. A little different variation of the twist here. And then come back around. All right, so bend the left leg, send the hands back, bring the right ankle on top of the left knee, and I just want you to rock the baby here. So sometimes when we have tight hips and we try to hook the elbow over the knee and then hold the foot with the hand, it's really hard for folks with tight hips. So this is a very gentle variation to get those hips to rock side to side. And now we're going to set up on the other side. So right leg goes straight, left sole of the foot comes in. And now we're going to bring those blocks and then inhale here, exhale, fold. You can take those hands out further if you'd like. You're thinking of drawing the abdominals up and in and finding the length. Five deep breaths here. Now 
crown rising up, inhale, take the block with you, sit tall, exhale, draw the abdominals in to fold, arms go overhead, breathing here, five deep breaths, drawing up. Inhale, rise all the way up. Good, bring the left knee in. Take that block into the left hand. Right elbow comes around the left knee. Give it a big squeeze. Twist around, look over the left shoulder. Right foot is flexed, breathing in and out here. Pressing gently down through that block to lift the heart, extend the spine. Let your breath discover the tight spaces. And then come back around through to center. Awesome. Okay, so next up we're going to go into a little bound angle. So I want you to bring both soles of the feet together. I am going to tuck those blocks in because even again, if you can get your knees all the way to the floor, you might notice a different range here. So I'm gonna start with the first one, my feet close to me. Take the thumbs, place them inside the toe pads, fingers to the outside. Open up that book. Hook your elbows kind of almost to the fronts of the shins, not so much the shins, but like the calves, like you feel that calf muscle there. And now pull your heart forward. So instead of curling down, pull the heart forward, send the hips back, breathe here. Just two more breaths here. Now changing nothing else, let go of the toe bind. Bring the arms close to you and then send them up overhead. Active Baddha Konasana. Hold for five breaths. Shoulders plug into their pockets. Option here to put the hands behind the head if need to. Just keep sending the heart forward. Two more breaths. And stack back up. All right, so from here, we're gonna set up for fish pose, Matsyasana. So I want you to take one block, put it to where maybe your head would be, put it on the flat um, version. And then the second block is gonna be where your mid back's gonna hit. Some of you might love this really high one. I don't. Some of you might need the low one. I'm going to suggest the middle if you can manage it. But if you need to switch to the low, you can. If you love the high, go for it. Now, as you start to use your hands to guide you in, have that block find your wide part of your rib cage. Now for us ladies, that's gonna be like where the bra line is if you choose to wear a bra. There is that line, okay? And now the head comes down and you wanna find that block where you'd like it. Now, once you have your upper body in place and you're like, okay, there I am. By the way, this might not be the most comfortable thing in the world, but bear with me. I want you to take one knee out to the side the other knee out to its side. And now we're adding a little bound angle to our fish. And I want you to breathe. Nice and steady here with your breath. You're gonna feel that traction of the spine. Try to stick with it for at least five deep breaths. You 
you may notice spaces in the deep belly starting to open and stretch and the hips Stay with those sensations of opening in the deep belly. Let the hips relax. Three more deep breaths here. Now, very gently, start to just elevate the left knee in towards the center. That foot will go flat on the floor and the right knee in towards center. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, let the knees roll to one side, just enough that you could start to come up onto your elbow. Take that block away, also the head block, unless, we'll get to that unless, but come on down to your back first. Ooh, take a nice deep breath in and out. Do you feel that spaciousness that was created in the rib cage? Now, because of the alignment of the spine and realigning the spine with such an intense pose, you might feel some pressure in the pelvis, some things shifted or moved. Breathe into those spaces. Now, if you find that when you lie down on your back, your chin comes way up and you feel like your ribs are straining and you have a pinch in that low back, I want you to take a block and I want you to put it behind your head. See that the ribs settle in, the chin settles in, the core can reconnect to its front line and you can breathe here. We're going to do one more pose before we go into Shavasana, but I just want everyone to have a few more breaths here to simmer the spine after fish pose. All right, so the next one, which is a beautiful psoas opener, those hip flexors, is going to be under the hip with a big stretch. Now, if you need to keep the block under your head, you may, but I don't always love it because we're going to be lifting the hips and setting a block on the low position under the hips. Get to the sacrum. Now, your head at this point should feel better even without this bolster. So try it without the head bolster if you can because your spine, when the hips are lifted, you tend to fall more into this neutral spine anyway here, okay? And it just keeps pressure off of your neck. Um, it's kind of a weird thing to have both bolstered in the sense of where your body's trying to align, okay? So try to be here if you can. You can also like roll up your mat if you need just a little bit of support. Um, and think chin towards the chest. All right, so we're gonna pull this right knee in. Give it a hug. Now, again, back to the block. You should feel like you're in a nice supported bridge. If the block is too high, you're gonna feel like your tailbone is sinking over it. And if the block is too close to the tailbone, you're gonna feel like your spine is sinking. So you wanna be right in the center of that sacrum, which is underneath your gluteal crack. Okay, so pull the right knee in. Think about sending that tailbone down and heavy towards its end of the block. And then if you're able to, send the left leg long. Now be here and breathe. Nice deep breaths. We're gonna be here for a little while now. I have long arms, so it's easy for me to hold on to my knee. Uh, you might find that you can use this block, put it on your knee and use it to kind of squeeze in. Sometimes you can get a little bit further, like I just got an extra inch there. Um, and that's because I'm no longer using my hands. I have a third party, if you will. So the brain is like, oh wait, I think we can go a little bit further. That is why, you know, doing like self massage does not usually feel as good as when you go to get a massage, right? Because 
your brain can sense everything in your fingertips, but also in your body. So when we pull in something inanimate like this, and we're able to sometimes get a little bit deeper. Just breathe here. Feel that space being created as one hip is in deep flexion and one hip is sinking into extension. Another option here as well, depending on your hip flexibility, like if you're out here somewhere and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't get that in, I can't get the block on top of the knee, you can take your block behind your thigh and pull. Also lovely. If you're like, that's grip, I don't know if I have it, you can always take the block away and hold uh, one hand over the wrist and pull back here as well. So like such. A few more deep breaths here. We're simmering on this one a little bit. All right, now. Before we change sides, bend the left knee so that that left foot rests on the floor. Place your hand, maybe interlace your hands, put them on top of that knee if you can, and just gently go in a circle. Now I'm gonna go single because I can go with a single hand a little bit further than double hand. So again, what feels good in your body, and then I'm gonna circle in the other direction. So some gentle cars here. Circular active, like activating rotational, blah, 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 acronym <laughs> for make circles. All right, now set that right foot down. Bring the left knee in here again. You can just start with hands clasped over the knee. Some of you might want to keep this knee bent, but we're going to try to straighten that leg out and get that so as to open. Breathe here. Also a great time to roll ankles, flex toes, stretch toes. We need way more ankle love. Option to add that block to the top of the D. We're going to be here for several more breaths, like simmering in. So make an adjustment if it feels good or just feels different. Explore a new space. You might start to notice that psoas is really starting to open because we've slowed our pace. We're just sitting with it. Those fight and flight muscles can turn off. Let's bring that block maybe behind the knee. Squeeze. Again, just changing the sensation. Staying with the breath. Start to release that block. If you have it, bring one hand to the knee and you're gonna just make those circles. We'll do just a handful in each direction. And then switch sides there so go the opposite direction very carefully. 
easy does it. Setting that foot down, bringing the other foot to meet it. Lift the hips ever so gently, rolling back down one vertebrae at a time. Just take a moment here with the knees bent, breathing in and out. Here, if you'd like, you can add that block back behind your head, helping to drop the ribs in. If you have the block behind your head, I encourage you to scoot it up more towards where the head meets the neck. You'll notice that your neck will start to traction. The block is kind of holding. It'll feel like your neck is being elongated. So the block will hold the head's weight and the neck and shoulders will start to melt down away from that space. And then from here, maybe you invite the legs to go out. Let them go as wide as the mat, maybe the hands as well. If that doesn't feel good, some options are to bring the knees back into a bent position, feet as wide as the mat and knees in towards each other to rest. Sometimes that helps change the position of the pelvis and allows your back to settle. So this is option as well. You're invited to have palms down or palms up, but palms up will help facilitate more of an open chest. And you can kind of just shrug those shoulders under you for a moment. Nice deep breaths here. Allow the eyes to start to flutter closed if you prefer it that way. If you are more comfortable keeping your eyes open, just soften your gaze and find some relaxing point for your eyes to settle. Start to feel your body relax into the earth. Do you feel your heels growing heavier? The backs of the calves, the back of the legs, the hips, and the deep hips, softening deep into the belly. Allowing the ribs to grow heavy and the shoulders to melt away tension. The backs of the arms sinking their weight. The hands becoming so relaxed that the fingers just gently curl in. And as the head deepens its weight to the earth. You can feel the neck release tension. And the heavier your head gets, the more you can feel how even through the hairline, the eyebrows can grow heavy. Stay present with your breath. Noticing it move in and out of your body.
you may notice your thoughts gather imagine them as a puffy white dandelion and as you exhale just allow those thoughts to scatter to the wind and simply stay present with your breath noticing it move in and move out Start to gently wiggle through your fingers and toes as you inhale deeply. And allow that movement to navigate into the wrists and ankles, stretching through fingers. And perhaps you start to roll that movement into elbows. Maybe you bend at the knees, take your feet wide on the mat glide your knees side to side together both to the right both to the left As your knees settle into center, maybe you reach those arms overhead and take a big stretch. You can lengthen back out those legs if it feels good. And then as you exhale, roll yourself onto one side. Let your knees just curl in, kind of find yourself in this relaxed side lying position and invite three deep breaths into your body. Now very gently start to roll yourself upright to a seated position. Come into any relaxed seated position and inhale, lift the hands up. Exhale, melt them to heart center. And may you leave this practice today feeling light in the heart, happy and relaxed within the hips and calm within your mind. Namaste.